Hello, Revive. Welcome. My name is Jamie Richards, and I am the Revive Young Adult Minister here at Hope's West Moon Campus. And I'm so glad that you're here. We say that all the time at Revive. We said that pre-COVID, but I have to tell you, after working from home throughout the week and like not ever seeing any humans, it's really nice to see you. So thank you so much for being here. Thank you also for wearing your masks and um, for, stay, for staying six feet away from each other unless you're breathing each other's air elsewhere, then you can breathe each other's air here here. Um, It is just, it's really good to be here. We have been praying for you. We don't think it's any accident that you're here, and we hope that God speaks to you tonight and that you feel God's presence in some way, shape, or form as you're here tonight. So um, a couple of things for you as we get going with Revive tonight. Um, There is, uh, we used to, um, oh my gosh, words. I like used them all at the last service. (laughs) I have to try to remember how to to talk. So um, pre-COVID, we would have cards in the back if you wanted to connect with us or if you had a prayer request or if you wanted to try to volunteer with Revive. And now we just have all of that on this one QR code that's on the seat backs. So if you're in the front row, you'll have to turn around and find um, one of these later. But you can scan this and you can let us know how we can be praying for you. We have a prayer team who prays for you. We have staff who pray for you throughout the week. Um, Whether or not we know your name, whether or not we know exactly what's going on, and we love to pray really specifically for you, so we would love it if you'd fill that out. And then two quick announcements for you, and the first one is that Revive is going to serve together in two weeks. Yes, Saturday, November 14th is two weeks away. That is bananas to me, but here we are. It's going to be November this weekend. So we are going to be serving at Joppa's Homeless Resource Center. Joppa is one of our mission partners here in Des Moines that serves the population of people in Des Moines who are homeless, and they need some help, like, rearranging in their um, resource area. So, like, moving some shelves, getting some things stocked differently, and we would love to help them so that they can not have to worry about doing that and do the work that they feel called to do. And so it'll be from 9 to 1 on that Saturday, and you can sign up on the Revive Facebook page. This is going to be capped at 10 people, so it's the first 10 people to sign up. Um, So we want to make sure that you know about that. And then that's two weeks away. Now next weekend, next Friday, um, this is for all of the gals in the room. Last weekend we had a guys thing, so this upcoming event is for the gals in the room. We are doing an online women's night with comedian Amy Barnes. She's really funny. She's funny enough that we asked her to come back, which you know means she's uh, pretty funny. And so we're doing this um, in homes. And so if you're a gal and you want to have some gal pals over, or if you don't feel comfortable doing it in person, you want to still do it on Zoom, you can do that. We are offering some dessert options and a creative arts option that you can come pick up here at Hope earlier in the day, take it home, and do that stuff together. And then Amy Barnes will come on at 8 p.m. on YouTube just for us. The cost is $10, and that just goes straight to Amy for putting together a set for us. And we're really, really excited about. Also, guys, if you want to do this, we're not going to tell you you can't have some dudes over and eat desserts and make a sign for your door that's really cool. It has like twine and like a little wreath and like it's super Pinteresty. but you could do that. You could put whatever you want on it. So don't tell Amanda I told you, Pastor Amanda, but I'm telling you, if you want to do this, that's up to you too. Um, it's called Instead because instead of staying at home on Friday night with nothing to do, you could laugh with some friends and have a good time. So those are our two announcements. The only other thing I will let you know about is is that if you want to stay up to date with Revive's announcements and all the things that we announce throughout the middle of the week um, that we would miss just if we announced them once a week, you can follow us on social media, on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. And then the other thing I will tell you, we're really excited about this. There's a ton of yard signs in people's yards lately. I don't know if you've noticed. There's a, a big deal election coming up this Tuesday. And so we thought that we would just show some hope in our neighborhoods. And so we have been giving these out for the last couple of weekends here at Hope. We ran out. We just got more. And I think we'll probably run out again this weekend. So if you want some, we have some in the back tonight. Kelsey, are they in the back somewhere? Oh, they're on your way out. So on your way out, when we leave tonight, you can pick up this sign. And then there's like the metal stand that goes in it. If you just have a window in like a townhouse or something and you don't have a yard, you can just take the top part. That's totally fine. So we wanted you to know that you have that option available to you if you want that. Um, With that Revive, I invite you to stand and wave at people, um, give them some finger guns, some peace signs, um, air fives, whatever, and we will greet each other and continue with worship. All right, welcome once again, everyone. I'm Levi. 
Hi. <laughs> Um, yeah, let's go ahead and get started with worship. As the prophets foretold, you broke the silence. Born of Mary alone, conceived by the Spirit.
Tonight's scripture, tonight's scripture reading comes from Matthew chapter 11, verses 28 through 30. Then Jesus said, Come to me, all of you who are weary and carry heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you. Let me teach you, because I am humble and gentle at heart. And you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy to bear, and the burden I give you is light. Here ends the reading. Let's bow our heads together in prayer. God, we come to you in this time, having lifted your name in worship. And God, we want to we want to be focused on you first and foremost in this time, and we want to take the opportunity to trust in your word and to trust what it says. God, that your yoke is easy and your burden is light. God, that what you have for us is so much lighter of a burden than what we are attempting to carry on our own. God, when we, when we lean into the life that you have for us instead of the one that we can design on our own, the burden is lifted and we are fulfilled. God, we ask that you help us to trust in your word in this time. God, that we open our ears and our hearts to listen. What is it that you have for us, God? We are here for you. We love you. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Go ahead and have a seat. How's everybody doing today? Oh, yeah, there we go. We got some activity in the house. All right. Well, Levi, you did a good job on that, man, that prayer right there, because that prayer right there just preached my whole message. <laughs> so I'm hoping that I can give some, some something a little extra, like a, like a little dessert for you guys, a healthy dessert, of course. Um, how many of you guys are burnt out in 2020? Show of hands. I like, to, I like an active crowd. Okay. He's not burnt out, though. But um, I feel like we're all burnt out in some way, shape, or form. Um, I know I've been burnt out. I'm burnt out wearing the mask, to be honest with you. I'm tired of walking into places and, like, normal and then like gotta go back back to the car <laughs> you know what I mean so that means somebody else has done that so I'm not alone I'm just burnt out but today I think it's going to be a deep I'm coming for hearts today because I don't want this to be a message that you can just come up with on your own I want it to be from God and I believe that God has a message for you guys that can touch your hearts change your relationships make you better and make you on fire again because right now we are burned out. So today, I'm hoping that we can be refreshed and take a different path, start trailblazing a different path. And what I like to do, I love to pray before I start. So bow your heads real quick. Dear Lord, Heavenly Father, I just want to thank you for this time. I just want to thank you for the people that have showed up. I just want to thank you for your goodness. I thank you for rekindling our flame tonight because I already know what you're going to do. And it says in Scripture that when your word goes out, oh, yeah. It doesn't come back empty. So I pray, Lord, that today that people receive it and that they, be, that they will remain full, full of your love, your kindness, your hesed love, covenant love. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. I'm excited. So, so the last time, which was just, you know, about 30 minutes ago, we had a little bit larger crowd, but I believe that God still wants to work in this situation. And I know I have a word for somebody because um, you've been a part of 2020. We're talking about relational burnout today. If you got friends, if you got family members, if you got a spouse, if you're dating, any dating apps, you're getting burned out. It's, there's no point. There's nothing else to say about it. You're burnt out. And it's okay. Because God, he is looking to do something new in the world. And if you're looking at 2020, we've been isolated, everyone, you know, away from people that we are normally hanging out with. But I believe there's a purpose in that. 
I don't believe that. I believe that God allowed it to happen for a particular reason. And yes, it's been all year, and it's caused us to burn out. But I believe that God wants to reignite that fire inside you so you can live a life for him that's pleasing, that's full of love, that's full of joy, and that's full of kindness. So I want to jump right into it because my main part is really at the end. I call them heart darts, right? And it's where I just, every one of them you can relate to where you may feel some conviction, but conviction leads to transformation. Can I get an amen? I love you guys. He was like, amen. Okay. So let's jump right into the, the verse. And it's cool. It's, because, it's really cool because she didn't choose the verse based off me. I actually picked this verse out. And when I came, that was the verse of the night. So I know that God wants me to read it again. So I'll read it to you guys once more. And we're going to have some fun with this verse too. Okay. So Matthew 11, Matthew chapter 11, verses 28 through 30. Come to me, all who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. What I've noticed about life in general is we love to carry burdens from season to season for no reason. And that's treason. I'm rhyming, I know. But God doesn't want you to carry that anymore. And actually, if you're being honest, you probably know that too. Like, yeah, I know, I shouldn't be trying to do more than what I could do. But you do, why? Something that's been on my heart is pride. We feel like we have to carry the load. We feel that we have to do more because we, either it's, we're trying to impress somebody or maybe we need to we have this achievement thing that we wrestle with, like we have to do, and God doesn't want you to carry things that you've done. See, the thing that I've noticed about life and now, I feel like the Holy Spirit is showing up, is that we have a hard time forgiving ourselves. Mm -hmm. So what? We just rather carry the burden. Well, I've hurt my wife, or I've hurt this, or I've done this to this person. You know what? My fault, I carry it. You know, I carry my weight around here. You know how people brag about, like, I'm carrying my weight. I'm like, I don't think you need to carry it because it's slowing you down. And what it does when we carry all, these, all this baggage, all this weight, is it slows us down from running the race that God has for us. And God doesn't, God is not the God that is saying, well, you've done this and then you're punished for that. I'm not going to say all of us, but a lot of us in here have probably been church hurt in some form or fashion. Where we took in, where we were living a good life and then all of a sudden we decided to just not go to church because that church was kind of, like they were coming at me too strong or they just were, they were just really mean or they, that just ain't the church for me, right? We've been church hurt in some type of way. And I'll tell you why. It's because we haven't really mastered like really loving people and getting to know God. And today in my message, I'm hoping through the end of this and through this that you can see parts of your story in it where you can actually replace things that you have put there that were wrong, that seemed right because it says in scripture that there's a way that seems right to a man. Right? There's a way that seems right. And what I like to use is the majority of people, weekends, turn up, cheese. Like, like there's a way that seems right. Like get the car, you know, work up the corporate ladder, get the crib, have the baby. And like, you know, like, yeah, I made it. But have you ever talked to a person that's lived that life? They're like, yeah, what am I missing? I thought I achieved everything. And I feel like we miss out on life when we don't do it God's way. So I'm hoping that this will encourage you guys to get in the word of God. Not just come here, get filled up. Oh, that was kind of cool. Like, bro, man, he was pretty good. Yeah, yeah. Okay, no. Like, I really want you to go home feeling like, ooh, I should probably crack open that Bible. It says in scripture, man, I'm staying on this a little bit longer. And I don't know why, but that's the Holy Spirit saying, let's focus on it. Like, there's people out here that are dying. It says in scripture that we are nothing but vapor, right? You're here today. Like literally, you're here today. And you're gone tomorrow. And we've all known somebody that has passed away that shouldn't have. So that's just proof that 
that day is going to come. But why do we live our lives doing what we want to do, right? You know, just, like, just living life so carefree. And I, that was me for many years. Thought I had it all figured out. Carrying burdens. Like, yeah, like, like for like my 20s, I believe, I've learned to humble myself. It took me about 10 years, a decade, a decade to give things to God. I met, a, I met a lady that she was probably about well, 50, 60, that, was, that still talks about, feels like unworthy of her calling and just life. She says sorry all the time and she feels bad for herself. You know why? Because she didn't learn the scripture. She didn't learn how to give her burden to God. And what it does, it robs you away from life. And God really wants to you know, give you rest for your soul. Because what he gives you is going to be a lot easier to carry. Like Levi said, it's going to be a lot easier. But what we do is we think we got to have it all figured out. And then we miss out on the true thing that God really has for us. So let's jump right into it, man, because I'm really feeling it. So a lot of us have friends. If you're like me, I was very, very popular in school. Actually, I had a lot of friends. And I was able to go to parties. Hey, Julia, what up, bro? Yeah, 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 man. What's up? Give me something. Give me something. Right? And I thought that was the cool thing. But as I continued to get older, I was looking at my life wondering why, like, I wasn't succeeding. Right? Why? It's because when you have too many friends, you get burnt out. You get tired. Right? Why? It's because they stop your growth. And you try to make all these commitments. And I'm trying to hang out with Lisa. I'm trying to hang out with Tom. And I'm trying to hang out with Richard, Ethan, Tommy, Todd, Dustin, Neil. And you can't even gain a strong connection because you got too many friends. It's important that we find our tribe, a few people that know everything about you. And I'm going to get more into that. But it's important that we get rid of some of those people because those people are stopping you and robbing you from your calling. And that was me, hanging out with just anybody. Well, he's my cousin, you know, should hang out with him. He's my homie. I ain't going to let him go. But all he wants to do is just smoke with you, bro. All he wants to do is just the sinful thing. And if you think you're going to grow hanging out with people that really don't want to grow, you're kidding yourself. And I tried it. Uh, what it does, it burns you out. And fear is the root of that. We're scared to lose people that we've grown up with. But God has something more for us. And I had to humble myself and, and say, okay, like, you're right. Like, I am making mistakes. I am being late to work. I, I am struggling in this area of my life because of this person. We had, I had to own up to myself and be like, why am I allowing this for my life? And you have to look inside, you have to look inside your heart, too, and figure out, and it's going to be hard, too. Like, hey, bro, like, and you guys have already done this, too, but maybe you need to do it again. Yeah. Um, hey, girlfriend. Or, yeah, what's up, bro? Um, yeah. Um, can't really kick it with you like that anymore. What, what, man? What's up? I just, yeah, man, just, I'm just trying to grow. And it sounds like an insult to him, but your life matters. And until you take your life serious, you're going to die with regret if you don't. And I, like it says in Scripture, not in scripture. I heard a friend say it. He said, regret weighs tons. Discipline weighs ounces. And when I heard that, it rocked me. Because so many people go to the grave not knowing their purpose. They carry all these burdens and they live with regret saying, I wish I would have. God wants to have a relationship with you now. You don't have to experience heaven when you go there. You can actually do it now. And that's why God is really wanting to be a part of your life. I hope that's me. I don't know if that's me or not. Anyways, I got these. Hey. God always comes back, I'm telling you. Preach. Like I said, you lack strong connections as well. So make sure you find a tribe. Um, so when I think about this, when I had a lot of friends, I was close with a few of them. But I had a lot more bad friends than good friends. And I was doing things that I shouldn't have been doing. Got me into a lot of trouble. And as I got older, I had to man up and say, I can't hang out with bro anymore. I can't do certain things anymore. Because it were burning me out. My destiny, I knew what God wanted me to do, but I couldn't do it because I had to let certain people go. 
there's only certain people that can be with you from when you were in kindergarten up until your senior year. But I'm telling you, they're not going to be able to make it. They're not met for your 20s because God is trying to grow you. And what we have a hard time doing is holding on to things that God has been trying to let you, help you let go of. And what it does is it, it stops you and it robs you from really living in the fullness of what God has for you in your future. Okay? So make sure you find your tribe. And, like, I have about five, six, I would say ten times, but <laughs> I'm not going to say ten. I'm going to say about seven people that I'm close really with. All right? But this is another thing that burns people out. I call this one investing gone wrong. And the reason why I say that is because maybe I can talk about it right here actually at the Proverbs because this would make sense. Fire goes out without wood, right? And quarrels disappear when gossip stops. I want to read it again because it's that important. Fire goes out without wood and quarrel disappears when gossip stops. I'm really going to focus on your fire going out. A lot of us struggle to really have that fire, that passion for life that we really desire, that we probably fantasize about. And a lot of us, we try to find it in giving, helping other people and helping other people and serving at the church and helping the homeless. And you're, you're giving out a word to somebody. And when your friend calls you, you're there to pick up, right? And you, you, you're, you're talking to them. But then when you get off the phone, you feel kind of burnt out. Or you're just starting to be like, why am I feeling like this? I'm doing all these good things. It's, and what happens is you forget about yourself. You need to have mentors, people that can pour into you as well. Because if you don't, you will get burnt out. And you cannot feed something, feed somebody something that you don't have. And I used this analogy last time is like we walk around like Ubers, but like, we're like, all right, I'm going to help this person, I'm going to help this person, I'm going to help this person. But we forget to stop at the gas station to get refilled. So then we're stranded, feeling stuck and lost. So make sure you have people that are going to be able to put wood on, on your fire so to keep you going. And I have a couple people that I reach out to. And this was actually a problem for me, if I'm being true, truthful with you. I was so used to giving, and I couldn't figure out, like, why I was struggling. It's because I wasn't having people pour into me to help me grow. Your fire goes out with that wood. Let people continue to put wood on you. Find people that want to put those logs on the fire. Because people are counting on you to shine bright. You have friends that are looking at you saying, man, when she do this or when he do this, I'm going to do it. But your fire is nothing but a flame. But if you put some logs on it, then the breath of God can come through. That flame starts to get bigger. Now you're trailblazing. Now something looks different about you. And now they're wondering what you're doing. And you can tell them, like, you know what? Yeah, I'm doing some big things. And then um, they'll be able to experience God in your life. Now, I want to, I already kind of talked about you, us giving, but let's talk about listening. The one thing I think we have a problem with in America is listening to each other. We just quick to cancel culture. I heard you guys talked about that last week, if you guys showed up, right? Quick to cancel them. Oh, you're a Trump supporter? Ha, get out of here. Can't be a part of this party, right? Or, oh, so that's what you rocking? Mm, you're not my friend. Oh, cancel. And we walk around with this mentality thinking that it's going to heal us. I get it. You're entitled to your opinion. But if you consider, the, if you're calling yourself a Christian, which I think what we all say that we're pursuing a relationship with God, and if you're not a Christian, um, that's to totally okay. You are welcomed. God wants to be a part of your situation. Whenever that time is, that's great. But we are supposed to treat people with a type of respect. Something came back to me what I wrote down. It was, don't let your career rob you from your humanity. We get these jobs, and we forget how to treat people. We start to lose ourselves, and our job becomes more important than how we love people. And as much as you make it, as cool as it sounds, and how big your house is, I get it. But that's not the key. You know what the key is? Love. And I wrote something down um, on Facebook that says, if you want to, well, I didn't put this one on Facebook, but it says, if you want to learn how to love, learn how to listen. One thing I love to do is really, like your ears, you know, take them, they kind of look like this, right? You put them together. Listening 
is the key to people's heart. And there's a lot of people that are hurting, that need healing. And I believe when you listen to people, that people can be healed. And I'm working on this daily because obviously you can tell I like to talk. <laughs> like, yeah, bro, like, it's the next point. But I've seen my marriage change so much because I've been practicing on listening. And your friends are hurting because we don't, we're not good enough listeners. And I believe if we can learn to listen, that more people could be healed. I really do. I've seen it in my own marriage. And it's not the easiest thing to do because I know that we all have something to say. But if we really want to start healing each other, we have to start listening to each other. This is the main one. The reason why we're so burnt out, let's be real. We're not spending enough time in the word of God. How many of us got the Bible app? The Bible app is good. I love it. I use it. How many of you care about your streaks? Man, I made it to like, side note, I made it to like 400 and some days and then I messed up. I know. I was so bummed out. Um, but it's more than just streaks. It's actually really getting into the word and re- letting it really read you. Oh, I heard in scripture it talks about, I'm not going to go that far because I can't really bring it, but the Bible is the only thing in the world that if you read it, it'll read you. And I know we long, we long to change and to become who God has called us. We do. Regardless if we admit it or not here, we go home and we sometimes say, I want to do more. Or I wish I would just, I want to be. Like God, I believe God comes and visits his people and shows us who we can be. And then because of our lack of faith or our ability to really understand God's heart for us and what he wants to do in our lives, we decide to put a limitation on what we really can do. And guess what? We get burnt out. Why? It's not really the job. It's just you that's chasing after something that God doesn't want you to have. Like, I remember, like I remember me coming into, um, like, in high school, I was like, I'm going to go pro. <laughs> Kobe, right? I'm going to go pro. I'm going to provide for my family. I was chasing after it. Then after I didn't make it, I was chasing after the next thing, corporate America. Let me get the money. Then I got to make it. And I was getting burnt out. When you find your calling, when you chase after that, your candle will get bigger or your light will get bigger. Promise you. Your fire in you will become brighter. And people will look at you and start saying, there's something different about you. Because you've been spending time with your creator. He knows you best. A lot of times we're trying to fix ourselves, but we're not opening up the Bible. God wants you to spend time with them. And it's super important that you do. Okay? But this is what I really wanted to get to. For anybody that's seeking marriage or trying to get married or are married or dating or in a personal relationship, this is for you. You've probably been burnt out in 2020, straight up. And your marriage may not be as on fire as it used to be. And I'm going to hopefully be able to talk about why. The first one, I'm going to just be real with you. This is what most people have problems with. So I hope if anybody's in a relationship or know somebody in a relationship, take some notes. If not, take mental notes and go home and then write them down. But we struggle to talk about our pain. Mm-hmm. A lot of us are wrestling with pain from, uh, from our childhood. They don't want to talk about it. A wise man once told me, I don't know who it was. I mean, I have my friend Todd. He tells me a lot of things. But one person should know everything about you. And, a lot of, and the reason why you feel that anguish when you look in the mirror or you feel that pain inside you is probably because you're not talking about your pain. And the thing what you see in Christianity is you hear about forgiving, you know, people and forgiving yourself and accepting God's forgiveness and then repent, right? Which just means to turn and live a different life. But what I've noticed, because it happened to me, was when I started to live a different life, I was walking like this towards my destiny. And I couldn't figure out why that it was happening. But then I remember there's a part in Scripture that says, confess your sins to one another so you may be healed. Yeah. 
We got some dirt in the closet. People, we have secrets. We don't want people to know about the things that have happened to us when we were a kid. We don't. Or that friend that did us dirty. Or that husband that put us through. You know. And same thing. The wife that did this or the person that did that. Betrayal, whatever. Somebody caused you pain. And like we, like if you want to go back to the first scripture, it says, give me the, the burden. But what we do is we carry it and try to be man enough. You know, I can take it. And what, it, what it's doing is destroying you spiritually and you're burnt out. If you're a Christian or if you're just a person that doesn't believe in God as well, the divorce rate is still the same, 50-50. Why? I believe it's because we are not bringing God to the table with us. But God wants to sit down at the table with us. Talking about our pain is not easy. Trust me. My whole, I had a hard time speaking about the things that I I witnessed when I was a kid. And that's why you need to find the right people. Because you need a safe spot to be able to talk about what's really going on in your life. I've met people that have literally lived their life almost to the fullest as far as age-wise. And they have this regret, this pain inside of them from third grade. They haven't let go. That's what I'm saying. If you really want to be free, you have to be able to talk about your pain. Because it's eating you alive. You're going home, you're looking in the mirror, you're trying to muster up the guts to be able to tell your spouse that you did this or that you're feeling like this or your, your, your friend that you're doing, you know, the friend that you're, you're trying to be friends with that he just ain't working out anymore. You're walking around with this pain and it's robbing you of the purpose that God has for your life. It's not going away. No matter how many drinks you have, no matter how many shots you take, no matter how many nasty, dirty videos that you watch, it's not going to go away. It's still there. Remove the Band-Aid. Talk about it. Let it be healed. That's what the scriptures say. And I promise your life will never be the same because most of us are living in a prison even though we're free in reality. But spiritually, we are chained up to the thing that happened to us from years ago because our dad did this to me or our mom treated me like this and... God took my uncle away or whatever it may be. It's hard, trust me. We have physical, we, we have this, like it's easy for, like, for me as a man, like physical pain is nothing. I can, or stubbing your toe, <laughs> ouch, right? Yeah, yeah, right? It hurts, but man, emotional pain, let's be real. Emotional pain, how about that anguish? That you look at a man and you hate yourself. That pain to turn into self-pity real quick. And you didn't, by that point, it's happening for years. And then now you're, you, you just want to drink. And now you're pushing family, family members away. See, God is trying to send them to you. But you keep pushing them away because of that pain. God wants to have a relationship with each and every one of you in here. Every day he's seeking you. He's not running away. He's running to you. God's not holding things back from you. He's holding things back for you. He doesn't want to destroy, he doesn't want to destroy your life. He wants to heal it. Well, I forgave that person. Okay, you did. Why are you still crying? Because you're having a hard time forgiving yourself. Well, I'm here to say, uh, God is here today to set somebody free. And he's saying that it's okay. And that what you did in the dark, yeah, he was there. But he wants to free you from that and that you are forgiven. He wants you to know that. So no matter how many lies, no matter how it makes sense to you, you are forgiven. The devil loves to twist something, really, really twist it, twist it, and make you feel like, oh, you know what, if she finds out or if this happens to you, you know what, it's a wrap. Nothing's a wrap with God. He does the impossible. Every day, you woke up with breath. Oop, that was the impossible. Why? Because you didn't have nothing to do with it. See, but what happens is our pride gets in the way. Our pride, we walk around trying to be super prideful. And then we miss out on a thing that God has been trying to get to us the whole time. You know that friend that God sent to you? She was actually there trying to really help you, but you pushed her away because of your pain. I, I could stay on that all day. I could stay on it all day. Because 2020 has brought so much pain to people's relationships, so much pain to people's lives because they've lost people because of COVID. 
has brought so much pain to America, to the whole world. Yes, your plans got messed up. My plans got messed up too. You know what? My money got messed up too, and I wasn't happy about it. But man, we serve a God that is so good. But we have to come to him. We got to talk about our pain, people. The reason why we're burned out too is we just don't make enough time for God. If anybody is in here right now, we got to figure out how we can fit God into our schedule. It should have been really easy to do it this year. Like, we couldn't go to the mall. We couldn't even, like, we couldn't even be around our friends. We couldn't even barely go outside because we've seen this invisible virus is what he calls it, right? <laughs> or whatever. We got to, if you want your life to be abundant, just find a little bit of time in your day to fit God into it. And it'll be the one thing that changes everything else in your week. Everything else in your week. It's not a joke. Like, I've tried it before. Oh, yeah, I'm going to get to that too. That last one. Oh, we get tired of waiting for the right person or so we can get back to our old ways. And this is us. We're just so impatient. We want what we want. We are dating. We've waited for people to come. Oh, well, God says, don't give me somebody. I'm going to live righteous. And then after six months, you're like, yeah, well, that person ain't came. I'm headed to Wellman's. <laughs> yeah, I know. I'm speaking to somebody because we do it. Oh, well, you know what? I'm going to download a Bumble app. You know, I'm going to swipe left. <laughs> or whatever it is. I don't even use it, but I know. Like, people use it. But what happens if we would wait on God? Because it says in Scripture, and this is why I love the Bible, God is not slow. He's actually just patient. He's actually waiting on us. He's waiting on us to figure out who we are. He's waiting on us to be able to go to the Bible, open it up a little bit, get refined, get new, put our, take off the filthy rags that the devil tried to put on us and put on the... The clothes, be clothes in righteousness. Walk around with power and truth and let your life, uh, let your life attract what God has for you. That's why we got to spend some time with God because he knows, he knows who you are. Even when you forget. That's why I want you to go back to him because he'll remind you again and again and again. Who knows this song? I don't know why I'm even saying it, but I'm going to say it. <clears throat> um, I run to the Father, I fall into grace. You guys know that song? No reason for hiding. My heart needs a surgeon, my soul needs a friend. So I run to the Father again and again and again and again. No matter how many times you run away, you can always come back home. Like, that's real. You can feel unrighteous and all this. I did it. But I said, I can't, I got to go back. If the Bible is true, if God is who he says he is, when I come back, he'll be there waiting for me with open arms. And I don't know who I'm speaking to, but you don't have to run anymore. You don't have to pretend. You don't have to pretend to be somebody you're not. God made you perfect. Who cares what your auntie said, your grandma said? God has a plan for your life. Oh, yeah, it's great. God doesn't, God's not in the business of doing anything small. Like, he's not. He wants to do something impossible. But you got to take off the limitations, and the limitations become chains. I'm speaking to somebody, and God sees your tears. Yeah, he does. And you can always come back home, so remember that. So let's keep going. We don't get the help we know we need. When you look in a house, you know, you go in a house and you're wrestling with that thing in you and you go in the mirror and you wash your face and you say, man, I know I need to probably talk to somebody about it. No, you do. Because what happens is it turns into a narrative and you have this cycle that you're stuck in in your mind. And see, the devil, somebody, I heard this yesterday night. The devil is not omnipresent. He can't be everywhere at once. Jesus can, but the devil can't. He may have minions in New York. He may got some people, you know, in California and stuff, but he's not omnipresent. Jesus is, right? God is. The devil, he doesn't know your thoughts, but he knows your habits. The things that you keep doing, he looks at it, watches it, says, ooh, do that one more time. Ha, he did it again. Or she did doing that. Okay, he watches. 
Writes it down. And then what he does is he finds that foothold into your life, smooth, right? Smooth criminal. Come on now, Michael Jackson. He comes into your life and he hits play. And you start living a sinful, well, there's a way that seems right to a man, right? Life. You're flowing and you're thinking that you're going the right way, but you, you, get to the, you get to parts of your life and you're like, something ain't had enough. I ain't married yet. Something ain't had enough. There's still pain there. Something ain't had enough. I'm still mad. Hmm. God's like, the only way that you can hear God's voice is by spending, your t- spending time in the Word. It changed my life. Get into a Bible study, do something. The Word of God, He's really, it's going to fill you up. It's the bread of life. It fills you up like bread, right? And I know maybe some of you guys are like, yeah, well, vegan. All right, well, well read the Bible and it ain't going to hurt you. <laughs> Lack of integrity. Some of us walk around here with this false humility. I'm okay. I ain't got to talk about my pain. I'm a real man. Or, you know what? I'm strong. I'm, st- I'm strong. Oh, yeah, that person walked out on me. I'm strong. But it's robbing you from life. Talk, that's why I say talk about your pain. Like, show true humility. Walk with integrity. Clear your conscience. Somebody in here has secrets they've been holding on to. God wants you to, to let them go. I don't know who it is. But you know who you are. God wants you to release them because it's ruining your destiny. Why? Because you can't stop thinking about it. So you can't even walk the way that you said. You can't even walk the way that you want to walk. You can't even talk the way that you want to talk because you lack integrity. You feel like a fraud because you keep pretending to be somebody that you're not. God wants to get that out of you because the devil will use that as a way to just hold you back. And when you think that you're running, oh, I got it. He'll pull you back and remind you that you're not who you say you are. You're listening to the wrong person. God knows who you are. That's why I say spend time in that word. And lifestyle evangelism. Now, this is a new one for me. I really didn't know what it was, but then I read it. I was like, hey, like, I kind of fit in that little area right now. But it took me 10 years to get there. This is, not a, like a, this is not like a sprint. God, he'll sprint to you, but like this refining and living differently is not a sprint. It really takes time. Why? Because you've been programmed to live a certain way for so long. And God is patient with you. You're like, I'm going to give you time to grow. But lifestyle evangelism is when you not only just talk the word of God, but you walk it out. Now walk it out, now walk it out, now walk it out, now walk it out. You guys know that song, right? Lifestyle, like your lifestyle should be, should mirror Christ as much as possible. Love people. It's in the scripture, out of all these commandments, remember these two. Love God, love people, or love others, or love your neighbor. We have a hard time mastering that one, right? Yeah, because if she's over there across the street right now, I don't care what she say. Like, we're just, we're, we're ready to just cancel them. Because that's how we get, oh, ooh, I'm feeling the Holy Spirit. We run to Facebook, which is the wrong book, and then we get our, and that controls our narrative. So then we live in the way that society tells us. See, God, he wants us to stand out. Mm. But we keep trying to fit in. Why? Because we're scared to hurt people's feelings. Trust me, I can relate. That's why we dim our light when we go to work. Nah, I don't want to offend this person. Turn my light off. And that's what? Burning you out. But God has so much more for you. I promise you, it's going to be the scariest thing to do, but it's going to be the most rewarding thing to do. You are here today. You could be gone tomorrow. If you haven't made a commitment to follow Christ, if you haven't asked Jesus to come into your heart, today's the day. Yeah. Yes, I know you've done some things in your past that make you feel unqualified to walk it out. Let me hit this verse real quick because I got so much. But Galatians 6, 9 says, let us not lose heart in doing good. For in due time, we will reap if we do not grow weary, right? That's what I was talking about. It's like a lot of times as Christians, we start something and then we stop it because, man, it ain't show up. See, we got expectations. God doesn't want to. 
He wants you to continue to keep doing good. It's, the, it's about the process. It's about what happens to you and other people when you're on this journey. But we want the destiny. We want to get straight to the destination. Life is not an instant gratification. Like God, he's an internal God. He's a God that wants to be present at all times, but he wants to show you a different way to look at the world where every day can be plentiful. Yes, you will have sorrow. Yes. But God will come and visit you and he will give you comfort. We want a joyful life. But how can you have a joyful life if you keep running away from your pain? Right. Pain is good. Why? Because pain will humble you. But don't live with it longer than you have to because then it turns into fungus. And it starts to eat at you. And then you can't sleep at night. And now you're bitter. And the only reason why you're bitter is because you just can't man up. And you fantasize about manning up and how your life would be if you would just come clean. You guys, feel what I'm, you guys picking up what I'm putting down, right? It's not over your head, is it? It's not too far. It's, I know it's kind of hard to hear because you feel like you've wasted so much of your life. But if you're still breathing, you, then you have time. You'll have time. And this is why it comes to my last slide here. Like, if you're looking to make that change in your life, in your marriage, in your relationships, your personal relationship, I believe these things right here, these practical things you could put into practice. Right now, your life could change drastically overnight. First one, take your relationship with God very serious. Not none of that watered down stuff like, well, you know, I, I, keep getting, I keep trying to get in there, but you got this little swagger like, yeah, I try to get to church, you know, like, bro, really, like, okay, like. And I'm not making fun of you, I'm just saying, like, your swagger would be a lot more swagged out if you would really go to church and really get in that word and spend time with God and see how he can refine you. Then he'll start to reveal things to you. And now you're walking different because, man, you feel like you got the cheat code of life. As Christians, we got the cheat code of life. Some of us have been waiting to just chase after these dreams, but we keep getting burnt out because we ain't got the right stuff inside of us. Walking around with pain, we looking like a wounded warrior. <sighs> Darn it, that sucks, right? <sighs> but God, he ain't mad at you. He ready for you to come back. Sit down with him and ask God, why? And what God would do is he'll sit down right next to you. Be like, come sit here. And he will open up this book of life and start showing you where he was when you thought he wasn't there. Oh, you remember that when you were three at your birthday and you didn't think anybody cared, but you got presents on that day and you didn't even know it was coming. Yeah, yeah, I know. Yeah, he's like, that was me. Oh, oh let me hear, hear me show you another one. Like, okay, you don't think I was there, right? Watch well, this. Oh, you remember that time where your friend betrayed you and you went home into your bedroom and you were just crying and you were yelling at me? But all of a sudden, you got a text from your best friend saying, hey, you know, I'm sorry for how I treated you. God's like, yeah, that was me. And then you fast forward to your life and God's like, oh, you remember when you thought your life was over? But then a car pulled up before you jumped. God's like, that was me too. He is the beginning and then Alpha and Omega. Yeah, he cares about you. Find your tribe. Have good people around you that you could actually trust because those will be the people that you'll be able to pour your heart out to when you are struggling you can go to them and say you know what like I'm struggling like I have these intrusive thoughts that I cannot sleep at night I'm struggling and they can give you resources that can set you free you don't have to wrestle with it longer than you need to that's a pride thing shoot it in the head get some friends that will shoot them with you because the enemy he's trying to pack a spot, get a bag, 
she'll hang out with you. Self-pity. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's not your fault. You've been tricked and you were deceived, but God wants to free you. But you got to let him. He's knocking. And what we do is we pace at the door like, nah, nah, what if it ain't it? God like, years go by. You try to muster up the guts to grab it. Well, won't does God just come invade my life? Because he's a gentleman. He doesn't want to kick down your house. He doesn't want to be anywhere. He's not, he's not wanted. Like, trust me, he wants to be there, but he wants you to choose him. Because he's already chosen you. That's why he showed up. But we have to open up the door. To let him in. Because he'll come in your house and start cleaning it up. And yes, Lord, my living room's kind of messy. It's okay, I already know what to do with it. Don't open that closet. No, let me open that closet. Okay, you're not going to like it. No, I already know. And I'm still here. Yeah, we serve a God that good. Get some boundaries in your life. Not everybody deserves your time, right? You are worthy. You don't have to hang out with certain people that you think you need to hang out with. You don't. You are too valuable to surround yourself with people that just don't care about you. God is trying to meet with them, but you keep playing God in their life. Let them go. Because they're holding you back from receiving God's love. Moving in your life and in your space. And God is the way, he's the truth, and he's the life, not her. God would visit her. But he wants to visit her in private, not while you're there. He wants to visit him in private, not while you're there. Find some people that you can trust. Stay committed to the process. It's not easy, but it's worth it. We work harder at our jobs than working with God. Like we try so hard to get our Mary Kay makeup and wear our clothes and us men to wear our tanks and get our shoes and for people that don't even care about you. That when you go home, they will talk bad about you. See, Jesus didn't have a Gucci or Prada. He just had that little white linen on him. Why? Because he knew who he was. He wasn't walking around like the Pharisees with their fancy coats and, you know, all fresh with their jewels and stuff. He was born in a manger. He humbled himself when he could have pulled up on the chariot. Yeah. He was a king. And God is trying to bring out the king and the queen in you. Last but not least, love God and love others. I may be over on time, but hey, we're the last session, so we got a little bit. I know, I'll speed it up. Thanks, Jane. Um, love God and love others. If you can master that, loving God, spending time with them, getting to know them, letting them speak truth to you, then those lies run away, get more truth. Now you're starting to feel brand new. You'll walk up to that one person that you hate, that one person that betrayed you, and you'll walk up to them and say, I forgive you. And it will break them because you have stepped out being that son or daughter of God, of the kingdom. You are heir into their life, and now you put them into the presence of God. And now they want to live differently. God is trying to get things to you so you can give it to the people that need him. We don't have to be burnt out. God is really trying to do something new in the world. He's looking for some trailblazers that will step out in bold faith and live in a righteous way. Because that should be the standard, not the exception. It needs to be everything. I promise you, your life would be different. Your friends are waiting for you. Your friends are not saved because you won't choose it. And I'm not putting that burden on you. Give it to God, but you know who I'm talking to. You step into it so you can save Sally. Step into it for that person that doesn't even know you, that when you meet at the grocery store because you were spending time with God, you were able to help them live that life. And if you can live that life, then you will be able to live 
like Jesus did and live a life on fire. Thank you. As we uh, finish up service here, would you all stand? Stand with us as we uh, begin to worship. We're going to finish with just one song here. Um, and as we do, I don't know what uh, which of the many nuggets of wisdom you're clinging to at this time. Um, or maybe you've got a little piece of all of them tucked away and uh, you might need a chance to review and go back and look at the podcast. Whatever it is that's on your heart in this moment, I just want you to, to, I just want to encourage you that leaning into what's difficult, leaning into the things that need changing, leaning into where there's maybe a need for repentance, or just leaning into something new that we've learned about God tonight. That where things are difficult, that is where God takes you and turns you into something new. Um, and this whole song that we're going to sing just... Uh, the metaphor is is of wine, of crushing grapes and turning it into into new wine, uh, and it's in the crushing and the pressing of the grapes that we become different. We take a different form, uh, and God can take us and form us into something that's completely new. Uh, and so, my prayer for us is that in this time, the lyrics of the chorus will be on our heart. God, make me your vessel, make me an offering, whatever it is that you want me to be. God, I am yours. I belong to you. Even if it's difficult, I'm yours. In the crushing, in the pressing, you are making new wine. In the soul, I breaking
many things that Julian said that I wrote down was, oh gosh, I'm going to botch it. Something about instead of going to Facebook, go to the book. I was like, oh yeah, that was good. And one of the things that I have been thinking about so much lately is if you are feeling burned out and you need a spiritual refresh, social media right now is not going to be the thing that makes you feel better. I just, I, I can tell you that pretty faithfully. And so instead of that, um, I would like to leave you um, and wrap up all of this series, this whole series about burnout with this. This is from Isaiah chapter 43. So if you want to close your eyes and just kind of like let this soak in, that's cool. If you want to open your hands out in front of you in a posture of like being open and receiving, that's cool. If that's weird, don't do it. Um, Just let these words of God be planted in your heart. But now, O Jacob, listen to the Lord who created you. O Israel, the one who formed you, says, Don't be afraid, for I have ransomed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. When you go through deep waters, I will be with you. When you go through rivers of difficulty, you will not drown. When you walk through the fire of oppression, you will not be burned up. The flames will not consume you, for I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel. Don't be afraid, for I am with you. Don't be afraid, for I am with you. And then one of my favorite verses is a little bit farther on in the chapter. This is um, skipping ahead to verse 19. For I am about to do something new. See, I have already begun. Do you not see it? I will make a pathway through the wilderness. I will create rivers in the dry wasteland. The wild animals in the fields will thank me, the jackals and the owls too, for giving them water in the desert. Yes, I will make rivers in the dry wasteland so that my chosen people can be refreshed. God, I pray that we would be refreshed, that we would see the new thing in the weird wasteland of 2020. God, I I know that you are doing things in us that you don't want us to miss. And so rather than focusing on all the things that we don't have or that we're missing, that we would instead ask you to help us to be open to what you want to do in us in this time. That instead of leaning into the burnout and talking about how burned out we are, that you would help us to turn to you and to help other people know where we have found refreshment. And that's in you and that's in your love and your grace and in your mercy. So God, I ask all these things um, over Revive, over everyone who's listening to the podcast or watching on YouTube now or later, that you would refresh us, God, with your love. We love you and we lift all these things up to you. In Jesus' name, and everybody said... Amen. All right, Revive, thank you so much for being here this week. Kelsey is our usher tonight. She's going to usher you out, and we don't have to worry about that as much at this service. The previous service is a little bit more full, and we want to make sure people are able to stay safe. And so this section goes out the side door first, and then when they're gone, this second section, and then this section, and then lastly, this fourth section over here. Thank you so much for being here, and we hope to see you next week. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.